If you've been looking to build an Intel i9-10900K computer for video editing in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more, then you're in the right place. I have run my 10900K build through 14 plus creator benchmarks to show you what it's capable of. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. Now, what can you expect from this video specifically? I'm going to list out the parts with the average cost you can expect. Remember, these are not the actual prices. The prices may differ when you go to make a purchase. These are simply estimates, not exact numbers. After that, I will discuss the build quality, then ease of installation of each of these parts. Then we will jump into the benchmark test to see how well this 1000K performs paired with a 1660 Super. If you're curious how to build this computer, I have a complete build guide for each one of the computers I've built on my channel. You can click and tap the screen up here in the YouTube cards above. The Intel i9-10900K build is outfitted with an NZXT H510 for around $69. The cooler is an NZXT Kranken X53 AIO for around $129. The motherboard is an Asus Tough Gaming Z490 Plus at around $199. The Intel Core i9-10900K comes with 10 cores and 20 threads at around $550. The GPU is an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM at around $265. Comes with 32 gigs of RAM Corsair Dominator Platinum at around $169. And the storage is in 1TB NVMe SSD Kingston KC2500. That is the boot drive and for the storage we have a one terabyte nvme ssd samsung 970 evo drive at around 150 dollars making this build around 1500 to 1600 dollars depending on the price points and when you purchase now also the power supply is a corsair RMX 750 gold power supply. Now, if you're curious about the exact availability or price point of any of these parts, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping into the build quality, the NZXT H510 comes with a generous amount of aluminum, making it an overall very durable build. Durability award is definitely going to the NZXT off of all the different cases I've used and built in in the past and present. But with the increased presence of aluminum creates a decreased level of airflow. It only has a front side vent and a space for two fans on the front panel to pull air through the chassis. So regarding um, you know, running cool and having good airflow, it's good, but it's not the best I've come across. The NZXT H510 has a discreet professional look and comes with some internal lighting to show off your computer components through the glass side panel. It would look much more suiting in a designer's office, so it would be the perfect fit for you if that's your use case. Regarding the ports, on this case, the NZXT has a USB-C, a USB Type-A, and a headphone mic jack combo. The ease of installation is great. The standoffs come pre-installed in the case, comes with directions and all the necessary parts for the installs. NZXT did a great job of making this setup user-friendly. However, the directions were a little more sporadic. They came in this massive like fold-out treasure map rather than the classic uh, booklet. This was fine. It was just a little, it just took me a little longer to find the information I needed uh, for a successful build. On a huge bonus point, I will give NZXT some props for providing a modular grouped reset power LED plug. Most brands stick with this separated plugs. So, um, and what, what I'm referring to is when you plug in for the power button on the front of your case, there's always these like four to six tiny little plugs you have to like perfectly plug in. NZXT provided a nice modular system. You just literally take that one plug, plug it in, and you're good to go, um, which makes it so much less cumbersome and confusing on how to plug in your motherboard for the front power button and all that. NZXT, way to go. The NZXT Kranken X53 is great. It is an AIO. It cooled the 10900K to about 58 degrees Celsius during the 4K export. This is a solid temperature moderation. I found the AIO a little more labor intensive than the air cooler installation that I've done in the past, which I'll admit I have more experience with. Uh, I have a lot more experience with air coolers, but it wasn't anything too difficult. NZXT provided good directions for this as well. If you're going for styling, I would go AIO all the way. They create a beautiful minimalist look inside of your case, and it also makes it easier to swap out the RAM. When considering a motherboard, there 
there are people of far greater expertise than myself, but let me cover the basics to help you with your decision. Make sure you have at least two M.2 spaces for the NVMe SSDs on your motherboard to be installed. It makes it much easier and cleaner to wire up your system. Also, I want to see at least two PCIe slots uh, because for me personally, this allows me to have a dedicated GPU and a built-in capture card for filming my videos like I'm doing right now using a software called vMix. Or you could use that extra PCIe slot uh, to double up on your GPU for double the power using NVIDIA's SLI technology or AMD Crossfire. The tough Z490 offers this feature, so you're in good hands. Other than that, consider if the board has PCIe 4.0 NVMe or 3.0. 4.0 will offer faster transfer speeds from your SSDs um, and ultimately a faster computer. For instance, um, the Strix motherboard, which I have installed on a computer in the past, does have uh, PCIe 4.0, but the Asus Tough motherboard in this computer does not. Um, so if you do choose the Tough motherboard for this build, you can pick the Samsung 970 Evo or Kingston KC2500. But if you choose the Strix, you would benefit from an SSD like the Samsung 980 Pro, which has PCIe 4.0 capability. When it comes to performance, we are definitely going to get to real world performance later in this video, so hang tight for that. Um, looking at the installation though of the 10900K, it is easy to install in the motherboard, and as I mentioned, you can watch my full build guide in the YouTube cards above. I chose the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super because it is a solid middle of the road option for a 4K video editing computer. On my average projects, I see a few drop frames if I set the indicator to run through the entire project without stopping, but I never even notice a single hiccup when I'm editing 4K footage with motion graphics and all of the uh, peripherals. More on this to come uh, as we get into the full benchmarks later in the video. Um, I would recommend if you want to get a little bit more powerful GPU, spend an extra $150 to $200, which is actually quite a lot of money in my opinion, um, you can get the RTX 2060, which is a great uh, opportunity, especially with 3000 series now out. Those are going to be more discounted from the retailers, so that could be a great choice for you and it'll give you more CUDA cores, more performance. The RAM, very easy to install for any set you purchase. I'm using the Corsair Dominator Platinum. I'm using two sticks. These have been great in my opinion. It is uh, really up to visual preference. The Kingston Dominator Platinum looks awesome. I love all the RGB in it, um, but that's more of just visual enjoyment. You can get um, a set of Corsair 32 gigs, 16 gigs, two sticks uh, for a little bit cheaper than I've purchased. Um, so you can click in the links below. I'll provide a more budget-friendly version if you don't need all that fancy RGB lighting. Um, do note that the big benefit to choosing an AIO is the ability to swap out and upgrade the RAM on the fly without having to pull apart a full air cooler to take it out, make space to install the RAM, yada yada. Another thing to consider is your SSDs. Um, my favorite brands are Samsung, uh, Sabrent, Kingston, and Western Digital. Outside of my disclaimer about PCIe 3.0 versus PCIe 4.0, it really just depends on your confidence in the reliability of different brands. Um, there's not a huge difference between each brand, just personally I'm a huge fan of Samsung, Kingston, and the others mentioned. This one specifically, this build comes with a Kingston KC 2500 1TB. Regarding the power supply, you want to make sure you have at least a silver. I personally recommend a gold. It's only usually about 10 to 20 dollars more to get a gold power supply and they're more reliable remember this is what's feeding power to your system so if the power supply shorts out or breaks or something happens it can actually fry the parts in your system or your entire build so don't cheap out on the power supply this is the course air rmx 750 great power supply um, again linked in the description below on the geekbench 5 single core performance the intel build came out guns a blazing picking up a score of 1420 which tops my charts for this test in the multi-core benchmark the 10900k is still a great buy at 9805 coming in a good bit behind the 3900x but well above the closest competition on my chart on Cinebench R20, the 10900K build picks up 6,378 on the benchmark, placing it in second place on my test results. Now, let's dive into the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. I use this benchmark to see how well a computer will be able to handle Adobe's design suite by testing it in the most system-intensive software in the suite, which is Photoshop. For the Photoshop benchmark, the 10900K and GTX 1660 Super Combo scored a 937, meaning this computer will cut through any Photoshop task like knife through jello. For graphic design, this build will dominate. You will experience smooth workflows in Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, other design applications such as Sketch, Affinity Suite, and 
Figma. It's one of the best scores I've seen in the Photoshop benchmark, so you're going to be in good hands here. Regarding motion design, I'm also using the Puget Systems After Effects and After Effects render benchmarks to test these computers. On the standard After Effects test, the Intel i9 10900K snagged a 981, and for the render test, it scored a 541. Let's take a look at some 3D modeling benchmarks to see how well the 10900K stacks up. For Autodesk 30S Max, it scored a 156.63. For Autodesk Maya, a 214.91. For PTC Creo, a 139.11, and for SolidWorks, an 81.64. Basically, tops the charts on almost every single 3D modeling benchmark. So, if you're looking for 3D modeling, the 10900K is a great choice. Now, on to main event video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm going to use a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro, adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains a total of 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion motion graphics. During the 4K playback with the 10900K, I saw zero dropped frames. This is fantastic, and it also runs with zero drop frames in fourth quality and half quality. Now, if you are multitasking and running fourth quality playback, you may see a few more drop frames, but you can easily switch to half or fourth quality to continue to get that smooth playback. And to render out the 7,240 motion design frames, it took the 10900K 2 minutes and 52 seconds. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The 10900K did the 4K to 4K export out of Premiere Pro in 3 minutes and 27 seconds, and the 1080p export in 3 minutes and 40 seconds. The 10900K did the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export in 5 minutes and 11 seconds, and the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p export in 2 minutes and 58 seconds. Lastly, as I know, many of you will want to know how the thermals and component usage are during the 4K export. The NTXT build with its 10900K stabilized during the 4K export at 58 degrees Celsius and reached about 48 decibels of system noise during that export. And for the full temps in the main applications, here are the thermal temps for each setup. And here is the component usage during some of the main benchmark tests as well. If you're looking for a 10900K CPU build with excellent export times out of Premiere Pro, killer 3D modeling benchmarks, and the best Photoshop score I have ever seen on my channel, then you will want to consider building with the Intel Core i9-10900K. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of these parts, remember you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want to follow along and build this exact build with me, you can click or tap the screen over here, or check out some other videos about the 10900 K over there as well. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.